I matched with this really cute yet mysterious girl on Tinder named Jessica. We hit it off almost instantly, much to my surprise, as I usually never have luck with these sorts of things. She was very beautiful and gothic looking, with a wardrobe that had to have been all black. We started off simply talking about horror movies that we both loved and just went from there. I was a little surprised when not long into our first conversation she invited me over to her place. I thought this seemed a little soon and sort of hasty on her part, but who was I to turn down a date with a cute girl? After all, what could really go wrong I remember thinking. If only I knew what was to come. I arrived at her place around nightfall the next day. She had a small house to herself at the edge of a dead-end road. It was a pretty nice and secluded spot in the middle of the woods. Jessica greeted me at her door before I even had the chance to knock. She seemed super eager to have me over, plus she was even more beautiful and enchanting than her picture suggested. Upon entering her house, I noticed that all of her windows had been blacked out with paint. The walls were lined with satanic and pagan imagery, with the house being solely lit by candlelight. I found this all odd but chalked it up to her just being very committed to the whole goth aesthetic. I should have known instantly that something was off and just turned around and left, but sadly I didn't. Jessica led me to her bedroom which carried the aesthetic of the rest of the house. She then motioned for me to take a seat on her bed, handing me a small pipe as she sat down beside me. I took the first hit of what she claimed was weed, despite it not smelling or tasting anything like weed. It had admittedly been a while since I smoked last so I decided not to say anything about it. We smoked and watched an old silent horror film for about a half hour or so before she abruptly turned the movie off. She promptly hopped off the bed, searching underneath it for a few minutes before finally pulling out a dusty Ouija board. I immediately tensed up upon sight of it, having never seen one in person before. She must have noticed my reaction as she said to me, You're not scared already, are you? Not wanting to seem like a coward, I told her no and threw on a brave face. She went around the room blowing out all of the candles except for a single red one that was different from the rest. We sat across from each other on her bed, with the Ouija board now between us. I expected we would just ask a few cliché questions before getting bored with it and moving on to something else. But that's not at all what happened. I began to realize at this point that I was starting to feel something from that weed or whatever it was that we smoked. I didn't feel high necessarily, just entranced in a way. It was almost as if I was no longer in control of my thoughts or actions. She pulled out an ancient-looking journal, flipping through its torn, yellowed pages until she landed on the one she was looking for. Per her instructions, we both laid the tips of our fingers on the wooden planchette as she began to read incantations out of the book. I'm still not entirely sure what language she was speaking in, but it was certainly not English. The flame of the red candle started to flicker violently as she continued reading from the book. I then felt the presence of something suddenly enter the room. Whatever it was though, it didn't feel human or benevolent. Then, the flame of the candle went out and we were plunged into darkness. I sat frozen in terror, afraid to even move a muscle or break the uneasy silence. At least a minute or two passed before I started to notice really heavy breathing, almost like a dog panting, coming from the corner of the room. I reached my hands forward to see if maybe Jessica had gotten up without me noticing. My hands landed on her thighs, but I noticed that she seemed to be wet, drenched even. I was so confused and disoriented that I almost forgot about the breathing in the corner of the room. I could still hear it, only now it had gotten closer. Now it was coming from right next to the bed, a mere foot or so away from me. Not knowing what else to do or where to go even, 
I closed my eyes as tight as I possibly could and put my hands over my ears. After a couple of minutes, I opened my eyes back up. I could see again finally, somehow all of the candles except for the red one were now lit again. My eyes darted to each corner of the room looking for the source of the heavy breathing that I heard only moments before. There was nobody. I then focused my eyes back on Jessica who was still sitting in front of me. Her head was hanging down and her stringy, jet black hair hung over her face, obscuring it. I tried to shake her but she didn't move or say anything. I began to push her hair back when I noticed she was covered in blood. I shook her again, harder this time and her head fell back. I still can't get the image out of my head. There were two bloody, gaping holes where her eyes used to be, they weren't just missing though. It looked like they had been clawed out of her skull. As if that wasn't disturbing enough, she was grinning from ear to ear. Almost like she was frozen in the middle of laughing hysterically. I knew that I needed to get out of there as quickly as possible. I slid off her bed and hastily slipped my shoes on. As I was heading for the bedroom door to leave, I heard Jessica start laughing behind me. I slowly turned my head, just to make sure that I wasn't hearing things. I could see from my peripheral vision that she was still seated on the bed. Only now, she was rocking back and forth with her head turned towards me, still grinning. I immediately flung the door open, stumbling as I ran for the front door. I made it to my car without looking back once. I could still hear her haunting laughter as I started my car and pulled off. I looked in my rearview mirror as I reached the road to see her standing on her front porch, waving at me. Only she wasn't the one moving her hand. Her body was dead limp. A large, shadowy creature with horns was holding her body up and shaking her arm to mimic her waving. I could see that he, or rather it, shared the same toothy, devilish grin that she had. I got back to my apartment and didn't leave my bed for days. I couldn't even sleep. Every single time that I closed my eyes, all I saw was her, still eyeless and still smiling at me. I remember when I first got home and how I contemplated whether or not I should contact the authorities. I decided against it, ultimately out of fear that I would be blamed for her death and mutilation. About a week passed and I had still heard nothing in the local news concerning her or her death. I began to become paranoid that perhaps I had accidentally left something there that could trace me back to her murder. My worries and paranoia quickly subsided however, as only a few days later her body was found. Her mom had called the police after she hadn't heard from her daughter in several days. Apparently it was an open and shut case, the police uncovered that she had been involved in several local cults that practiced witchcraft and the occult. They simply concluded that she had died due to her own association with these dangerous cults and that she was part of some sort of human sacrifice. I slowly but surely began to get over the whole experience and move on with my life. Or at least I felt like I was moving past it all. I got back on Tinder after about a month or so of isolating myself and avoiding all human contact. I went on a few dates with some decent normal girls but there was never a spark between us, or at least I never felt it. I still thought of Jessica a lot, but I always tried to push those thoughts and images out of my head as quickly as they popped up. I was usually pretty successful at doing so, until nighttime came around that is. At first it was just little things. For example, I would wake up in the middle of the night to find all my lights on even though I clearly remembered turning them off before bed. The worst nights though were the ones where I was woken up by a faint yet distinct laughter coming from my bedroom closet. It happened at most a few times a week, which admittedly sounds quite torturous. However, it always went away on its own if I just pretended to be asleep. 
Rather than these events slowing down or coming to a stop even, things have just continued to ramp up and increase in strangeness. I was sleeping in late one Sunday when I was suddenly jolted by someone furiously pounding on my front door. I slowly crept up to the peephole, more curious about who would be knocking on my door on a Sunday afternoon more than anything. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Jessica, just standing there, still smiling at me with that inhuman grin. She looked up into the peephole with two black voids where her eyes used to be. I knew that what I was seeing shouldn't have been possible but I also knew that I wasn't just seeing things. I backed away from the door slowly, attempting to make as little noise as possible. Her pounding on my door continued for the next two hours before just abruptly stopping. I ran back to the peephole just in time to catch a glimpse of stringy, black hair as it turned the corner at the end of my hallway. I just wanted all of this to end. Everything seemed to be back to normal finally. All of the strange, nighttime phenomena that had been routinely taking place just stopped. I couldn't have been more relieved. I should have known better than to get my hopes up though. This next occurrence happened only three nights ago when I came back home late after a night of hitting the local bars. I wasn't inebriated but I also wasn't sober so it's not much of a surprise that I didn't even notice that my front door was unlocked when I arrived home. I kicked off my shoes upon entering my apartment and fell back onto my couch. I had yet to turn a light on so it took a minute before my eyes adjusted to the darkness, revealing something laying in the middle of my living room floor. As I got up to take a closer look, chills ran up my spine as I recognized it to be the same Ouija board that Jessica and I had played with months earlier. I immediately sobered up, grabbed my car keys and left my apartment. I looked back to my apartment once I got to my car, afraid of what I might see. I expected to see Jessica standing in my window, but instead I saw the horned, shadowy figure that I had seen once before. It was just standing there, looking down at me and waving while keeping that same sinister grin. I've been sleeping in my car ever since. I usually just stop at rest areas to use the bathrooms there and to try and catch some sleep. However, I've barely been able to get more than a few hours of rest over the last 72 hours. Every time I start to drift off, I met with that distinct, menacing laughter ringing in my ears. I'm not even sure what other options I have at this point. I've almost begun to accept this as just being part of my life now. I've come to accept that there may be no hope left for me as I truly don't know what else to do. I do know one thing though, if I could go back in time and change one thing, I would make sure that I never laid a finger on that Ouija board.